Practical SQL Server 2012, Administration and Programming, Modify, Insert, with Select Subquery. Let's create a new table. So I'm sending down three batches to SQL Server Engine. This is the first batch, this is the second batch, and this is the third batch. Execute. And here is the insert select. So this is the select subquery. We can run the subquery by itself. We have to make sure that the column layout matches the column layout of the target table. Otherwise it's not going to work. So let's insert. And it was a successful insert. Let's check the results. Miss the S. Execute. And here is the result. Let's do a similar test in pubs. Execute. So we have a column as the <coughs> author's ID last name and uh, sales amount and the indication where is that row coming from control r and this is the insert query let's separate it with a go insert Execute. Three rows. Check it out. And changing the database context back to AdventureWorks 2012. Save. hide results. We are going to create a table for test with uh, select into. And when we truncate that table because we don't want the data in it, we are going to do a new test. Because we use the data from sales order header the integer identity part will be inherited so we have to turn on identity insert to explicitly insert data so let's do that execute So we inserted 31,465 rows. Now just with simple one command, we are going to erase all of that. So at which, at this point we should have nothing in the table. test table. We have to make sure we don't use trunk it with a production table. Select star from go. Trunk it is very dangerous because we can knock out millions of rows just with a single one line statement. We have to turn on identity insert because the first column sales order ID was inherited as identity in a select into and now we are going to insert the 31,000 rows again we got an error message so we have to specify the entire column list 
for uh, we insert. So how do we do that? How do we get the entire column list? Well, it's very easy. We just refresh. And uh, let's find our test table. And here is our test table. Right click, script table as insert to new query window. And this is the part we need. Exit. So we have to change this part of the query and insert into execute okay we have to add sales order ID we automated script left it out because it's like auto generated and execute again and we are successful we turn off identity insert It's not very easy to get rid of the identity property for a column. Even if we do alter table, it's not going to remove it. The property is still here. Identity. If we look in the graphical user interface, right click, design, and look for sales order ID property identity specification here we can change it here we can change it to now and then if we right click we see a script is generated to do this but the script is going to create an entire new table move over the data and then we'll drop the old table let's exit we are not going to do any change this was just for demonstration purposes So if we do a select star from sales order header, we have 31,000 rows and uh, we can remove all the rows by truncating the table. Truncate is logged minimally, therefore it's much faster than delete. We can use the top function to insert 2,000 rows. We need the big script again. And select top 2,000 star. Let's see the entire script. So this is it. Execute. We need identity insert 
insert turned execute this is a batch this is, these are two batches we are sending to SQL Server database engine and this was successful we should have 2000 rows inserted we insert select indeed we have 2000 rows and truncate with test table We can also use the top function with a variable, and this is a demonstration, although we need the entire column list for this to be successful. Let's create a new table, and the new table is going to be the server table. So we check if already exists, we will drop it if it exists. Primary key is int identity 11 auto num numbering. Server name is sysname. Data type and it's unique. So this is the surrogate primary key and this is the natural key. And we are going to use uh, insert selects to populate it. So we are down to standby, execute, populate it with four rows, and continue with a population. And select. And here it is. This is the name of a current server. We can also do union all with selects. So this is a new demonstration. And here we are selecting literal values. Here we are selecting a system variable and do a union all to create a set of one, two, three, four, five rows. So let's execute it. We need a go here because create table rec has to be the first statement. In a batch we are sending down another go. Usually we can go wrong with goes except when we are using local variables when we have to be careful. Execute, and here is the result, the same result. Repositioning to Northwind, so the database context is changed. And these are products, these are customers, and these are employees. we are inserting customers table with insert select execute nine rows were inserted but this is test only, so we want to remove the nine rows. And we are removing with a where close predicate because this is the marker what we were inserting. And nine rows were in, uh, removed. Here is a real interesting use of uh, insert select. And uh, we are creating a test table with select into and then we do something fascinating it's a very powerful two lines we are inserting the product table and selecting from the product table so we keep duplicating the product table 
and we say go 12, we are going to do it 12 times. Well, this is uh, something unreal. So at the end, we'll end up with a very large table with a simple two-liner. The program is running right now. Why is it so slow? Well, it was it's finished. It was creating lots of rows, always duplicating. So the net result is two million rows. Actually, that was very fast due to modern technology. Incredibly fast to create two million rows. But this is a heap because it doesn't have a primary key. When a table doesn't have a primary key, we call it heap. To make it into a table, we have to add a primary key. And uh, since we have duplicate data where we have to make it unique uh, at some level, but this is on, only for tests, so not real data. We don't want to keep all the duplications in real data. We make it unique with uh, adding a new column, which is identity 11, so it's going to uniquely number each row. So it's running. It took 31 seconds to complete. Well, it had to number and rewrite each row in the table and execute, and here it is. We see the new ID added, and here is the data which we borrowed from the production.product table. Drop the test table. Recapping, insert with a select subquery is a frequent way of uh, populating uh, tables. Important things to remember that the insert column list must match with the select column list. If there is no match, uh, the engine may do implicit conversions or we have to do explicit conversions. Also, identity column insert has to be handled a special way. This is the end of a unit.